only promote the truth. We are live again. I'm telling you, I'm doing everything in my power to come in at least five to six days a week for the next 30 days. I'm doing everything in my power. There's so many things happening. We're so busy during the day. We're translating. We're preparing for this massive project called the True Scriptures. Now, here's the deal. When you come on, you want to hit the like button, you want to hit the subscribe button, and you want to put the bell notification on always so that it will tell you when I come on live because what I'm going to start doing is I'm not going to spend so much time warming up the room. I'm going to give the information because most of the people that see what we're doing on the lives are the people that are watching the recording, believe it or not. It gets into the hundreds and hundreds and then grows into the thousands that see the replay. So if you're listening to the replay, my goal is to get it within three minutes. You can literally literally just fast forward three minutes ahead and be able to get into the meat of the video. All of us understand how lives work. Most people are waiting for a crowd of people to show up. Me, I'm going to come in jamming. Three minutes max, I'm going in because I know that hundreds and then thousands of people are going to see this on a replay. So as you do come in, drop your name in, where you're coming in from, send a shout out, give a praise to Yahuwah. And I'm trying to do my best to keep these to around 30, no more than 40 minutes when I'm doing these scripture talks. So we got a scripture talk and this one is based upon the one who comes in the name of Yahuwah That's the one that gets blessed. And I just walked in the room because I meant to do this live about 45 minutes ago. And my wife was like, when are you going live? I'm like, well, I know what people like to see. People like to see a lot of confirmation. Yahuwah speaks to me. He'll tell me things over decades. He's been speaking to me now. I should say almost a couple of decades. But I've been studying scriptures for three plus decades at a scholar level. Good to see you, Samuya Magi, Nia Thomas in the house, Amber is here, Carl is here, Nunya, well, look at these great names, Lena, uh, we got Lynette coming in. So I'm warming it up, but I'm telling y'all, put that notification, smash the likes and put the notification bell. Just go, if you're on YouTube, you're on Facebook, I'm pretty sure all of them have notification bells. You guys are going to want to know what I'm talking about because I'm doing discipleship. Matt Wells from Mississippi in here. I'm telling you, I'm doing discipleship and I'm coming in the name of Yahuwah. And I'm telling you, if you come in the name of Yahuwah, it's you that gets blessed. And I'm going to prove it tonight from this true, 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 truth scriptures. The scriptures that are raw, real, authentic. But anyway, I'm going to get into it. Let me get over here. Let me get dialed in. Mark, I promise you now, I'm going in in less than 15 seconds. I'll I'll be diving in. So you probably want to get a notepad. Like if you're like really into understanding and studying scripture, you're going to want a notepad. You're going to want a notepad, fam. We're about five seconds away. From going in. One second. I had to dial something in here. Get my live dialed in. There's my live. There's my link. And three, two, one, in. All right, listen. Let's go over to Matit Yahoo. Let's go to Matit Yahoo. That's Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. Go to Matit Yahoo. Go to chapter 23, verse 37. Now, most of you listening to me, you're going to pick up a version of the scriptures that is corrupted. So if you pick up a King James, if you pick up an NIV, if you pick up a 
all the, those are corrupted. So in almost every single English, because I'm talking in English, which hasn't been around a long time. It really started getting dialed in around the 15th century. But you're talking about like the 5th century to where it's like, ah, okay, we got it. Coming out of the German and the French language. So this is important for y'all to understand that I'm going to be talking to you and I'm going to be sharing with you, but you're going to have to be really consciously competent so that you begin to grow in Yahuwah. And so Matit Yahuwah, that's Matthew 23, 37. I'm going to read it and I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure you understand this because this is how we translate from the Aramaic and the Hebrew. We don't guess, we don't wish, we don't hope. We're looking at those accurate translations. And so evidence and the greater weight of evidence is important. Because we were not there. Every one of us here, we were not there when Yahushua was walking on earth. So what are we doing really? If we were not there with Yahushua, what are we doing believing in someone called Yahushua and Yahuwah? What are we doing? What we're doing is we're doing it on faith. We're doing it on, on we should be doing it, I should say, on the greatest weight of evidence. And you can't weigh evidence by what the majority says. See, because the majority can get swaying one way or another. They can literally get swung to go, go this way or that way based upon hype. So you got to have some very strong basis to get to go. Why do I believe what I believe? So what we tell you is if you're going to believe in Yahusha, he is established, which I showed yesterday, in the Brit Hadash as showing up on earth. You're going to have to decide, do I believe he came to earth or not? So once you decide, yes, Yahusha, there was a savior. There's a father and there's a savior. The father sent the son, and I'm telling you, the son is none other than the father in the flesh that's playing a role walking on earth. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with Alua, which is the mighty one, the almighty. And the word was Alua, the almighty. So if the word was Alua, and there's Yahusha looking at Tama and looking at Pila, Philip, and saying, how can you say, show us the father when you've been with me all this time? From now on, you have seen him. Are we going to ignore the scriptures that we've been reading? Yahushua said, from now on, you have seen him and you do know him. And that wasn't enough. So when Toma, Toma, I should say Tama, which is Thomas, when he asked him about showing the father, well, that wasn't enough. Then Philip came behind him and said, just show us the father to be enough. He said, Philip, how can you say anyone, how can you say, I should say, Show us the Father, because anyone that has seen me has seen the Father. So we know that the Word is flesh. The Word is Yahusha, and Yahusha is Yahuwah. And most of us, as our human minds, can't gravitate to that. But we got to let it be what it is. Otherwise, stop saying you believe in the Scriptures. And if you believe in the Scriptures, scrub. Y'all should put that in the chat. Put it in the chat. I got to scrub it. I can't just believe what somebody put in here. Because y'all are really on faith, which Satan is praying you don't love Yahuwah with all your mind. I don't know if y'all realize it or not. Satan is literally praying that you don't study to show yourself approved. Because Satan knows that Yahuwah has given him. I'm going to tell y'all something that's in the scriptures. Yahuwah has given Satan the power to deceive people who don't love the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12. Read it. That's right, Lynette. Scrub it. So if you read 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12, you're going to understand that scriptures you've been reading 
have been corrupted. And you're sitting there thinking there's no way that Yahuwah will let his scriptures, his word be corrupted. And Yahuwah is telling you, if you don't love the truth, I'm going to send you a delusion. Well, guess what the greatest delusion that's ever happened is? Guess what the greatest delusion is? It's in the translations. Thank you, Amber, for putting in 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12. The translations are the greatest deception ever. Because once people learn how to read, they start believing what they read. And Satan, which is the prince of the airwaves, who's been given authority by who? Yahuwah told him. Read 2 Thessalonians 2 through 9. Because it says it's according to the working of Satan. But then it says Yahuwah is the one that sends the delusion. That means he's given authority to Satan, to Mastima himself. The name of the adversary. Most people don't even know the name of Shatan. He's been given authority to fool you. But I'm here to take those scales like he did off of Shaul, Paul, and go, look, this is the real deal. So now when you read the scriptures, you got to understand that I got to read scriptures that are authentic and scrubbed. That's why the True Scriptures Project is so critical because we're scrubbing. We're literally scrubbing it. So I go back and I look. And housekeeping made affordable saying, what is your greatest discovery to your translation? There's 400,000 errors in the Greek translations. So housekeeping, the one that just left that note, the version you're reading, if it's like a, a, an English version, or if it has even removed the corrupt names, you're going to get down in maybe the 1% to 5% range. But if you got 400,000 errors in the Greek translations, even if you go down and say, okay, 90% are just punctuations, 10% are real critical errors. That's 40,000 errors. 40,000? Okay, 1%. 1% of 400,000. Get your calculator out. Take your calculator out and go 1% of 400,000 errors. That's 4,000 errors. So that's the greatest discovery to go. There's so many errors and what we put our faith in is ridiculous. You've had said that's too many. Versus if we just look at the language that Yahusha spoke when he was on earth, he literally spoke when he was out and about, he literally spoke Aramaic. So in his common everyday life, interacting with the masses of people, he spoke Aramaic. When he, well, listen to me, y'all. When he spoke to the crowds, he didn't speak in Hebrew because Hebrew was not the language of the time there because they had been taken into captivity years ago by the Babylonians and the Babylonians forced on them Aramaic. So when Mel Gibson did the movie, The Passion of the Christ, he did it in Aramaic because he wanted to be the most authentic version. And so when you look at what Yahusha spoke, which was Aramaic, now when he went into the temple and he read the scriptures, there was no Brit Hadash. There was no New Testament when he went into the temple. When Yahusha went into the temple and read the scriptures, he was reading the Tanakh, the Old Testament. And I'll say these words so y'all understand them, even though they're corrupted. Old Testament is corrupted, corrupted. New Testament is corrupted. But I want to get y'all up to speed. So when Yahushua went into the temple, he was only reading Abari. That's the real name for Hebrew. That's the only thing he was reading was Abari. Thank you, Nunya. Appreciate you, sis. So when he's sitting there reading Abari, he's reading Hebrew, okay? When he went out and spoke to the people, 
He's going to speak in Aramaic because that's what most people fluently understood. Like most of you that are in the USA, you wouldn't really understand someone that speaks all the way through paragraphs from England. You're going to get messed up when they say, where is the loo? Someone from England comes over to the United States of America and you don't know anything about Britain, about the UK, the United Kingdom, and they walk up to you and says, where is the loo? What are you going to think? In the chat, put what is the loo? Can anybody in the chat tell me what the loo means in Old English? Amber's got it. All right. Bathroom. Listen to that. Loo in England is bathroom. But if you ask 99% of USA Americans, where is the loo? Y'all tell me in the chat. What are they going to say? Tell me, Sumiya. Sumiya. Tell me, Amber. Tell me, Yvette. Tell me, Nunya. What are 99% of the people going to say if you walk to them and say, where is the loo? They're going to be like, what are you talking? Where is loo? You mean like Lou who? Lou Gossett? Lou Phillips? Lou who? They're going to be thinking about a name of a person, not that that's a bathroom. And see, this is what's important to understand. Yeah, their friend Lou. So they're going to think that you're like, you're looking for their friend. Thank you, Yvette. All right, let me get into it. (laughs) What's that? Who's that? Right, Amber? Is this making sense to y'all? Hmm? Is this making sense at all? Why well, I suck on me some good tangerine juice down in Columbia? Any any sense? All right. So if this is making sense, Samaya, I like that. Samaya, I got you now. Skip to the loop. Right. So we and again we have fun in these scripture talk jam sessions, right? So what I'm telling y'all is back then, if Yahushua came out and he spoke to the people, the masses in Abari, in Hebrew, they wouldn't get it. They wouldn't understand it. Because they had come to a quote, like America in this chance, in this instance. I'm giving you something to be able to relate to. They had come here, so the language is different. The dialect is different. It's a sister language. It's it's related. So, So Aramaic and Hebrew, they're related, but there's very important nuances that are critical. Good to see you, Peter. So what I'm telling you is, once you understand the real words, your whole life changes. Freedom sets in. Laughter in your soul. Don't y'all want to laugh in your soul? I laugh in my soul. I'm never, ever tripping. And never do I feel guilty. Ever. And many of y'all listening to me, you feel guilty a lot about different things. You want to know why? Because you haven't been set free. The scripture says who the son sets free is free indeed. So I'm going to help you set free tonight. The one who comes in the name of Yahuwah, that's the one that's blessed. Matit Yahu. That's Matthew 22, 37. Yahusha's talking here. Yerushalem. I should say, Yerushalem. That's why I. Yerushalem. Yerushalem. You who kill the prophets. And stone those who are sent to her. Do you know how often I wish to be able to gather your children together? The way a hen gathers her chickens under her wing. But you would not listen to me. That's the correct translation. But you would not listen to me. John Dudley, good to see you. Time up, good to see you. Look, Yahushua's saying, I've always wished to pull you together with me. 
I've always wished that we could just come together and be on a court. But instead of us coming together, when I bring you the truth, you literally do what? Kill the messengers of truth. You kill them. So historically, Yahush is saying that the person that keeps bringing the truth on this earth, the people on this earth keep killing those people. They stone those people. Whoever brings the truth on this earth, that's why you're going to have to be girded up and you're going to have to get trained up and you got to stop putting the covers over your head and you're going to have to get strong in the word of Yahuwah and the real word. And Yahuwah sent me to tell you this. There's no way around it because I ran from it too long. So I'm not here by my own personal choice as far as my first right of choice on this earth. I'm being raw with you. I'm not here because I'm born and miraculously, I understand all these things and I'm just here to try to get you to believe what I believe. I'm telling you, I don't care about any of that. I'm telling you, I read the truth, I scrubbed it, and then I knew there was something to it, but I knew that the organized Baptist church, the Seventh-day Adventist, the Jehovah Witness, all of these other things, the Methodists, the, you just keep naming them, the Catholics and the Mormons and go on and on and on. I scrubbed them. And I looked at them and I'm like, that's not the truth. And when I went out and searched for myself and I sought for Yahuwah with all my heart, why? Because I told him to leave me alone at first and he wouldn't. He kept poking me and creating situations to where I'd be interested. In, oh, let me check a few more things out. And then once I would check it out, I get like a little inspiration. And then I get smacked around a little bit, a little more inspiration, smacked around. But then I always knew something was there. Y'all know that feeling. Every one of y'all listening to me. Y'all been through all that stuff. Yeah, Lutheran, name it. Carl, it's all over the place. And none of that's real. Why? Because the people that bring the truth, Yahushua said, you're going to kill them people. You're going to kill them. Verse, verse 38. See, your house will be laid desolate. I don't even think we get what Yahushua is saying here. Yahushua is saying that, Yer that Jerusalem, the way that we would know it, the way that it was meant to be initially from Abraham to Yitzhak, Isaac, to Yaakov, Jacob, all the way down, Yusuf, Joseph, keep it moving, Masha, Moses, keep it going, Yahusha, Joshua, keep it going, prophet after prophet after prophet after prophet. Yahuwah kept trying and trying. That's why we got this long hundreds of year period between, between Maliki Yahu and Matit Yahu that people can't even hear from Yahuwah. Tired of it. Yahuwah's going, ah, I'm, I'm tired of it. I'll be back, but I'm going to give y'all some silence. Then who does he send to break up the silence? Who does he bring to break up the silence? Yahuhanan the Immerser, John the Baptist. And Yahuhanan the Immerser came with fire. But watch, before I get to him, Yahushua says, I'm going to leave your house desolate because you won't listen. You keep killing people I send you. And then he says something critical. It's like a big old butt. But I say to you, from now on, verse 39, Mati Yahu 23, verse 39. For I say to you, from now on, you shall in no way see me. Yahu, she says, you're not going to see me in any way until you say. I don't think people has caught that. They think that that's something that's coming. Yahuwah 
is talking to you, talking to you through the son on earth, Yahusha Hamashiach. And he says, from now on, you will not see me unless and until you say, blessed is the one that comes in the name of Yahuwah, Baruch. Y'all gonna make me put it up. Y'all gonna make me put it up. Let's see what happens. Y'all gonna make me put it up. Here it goes. I'm gonna type it in. I got the Hebrew words there already. Baruch. I'm typing it out. Baruch. That would be Ah Ba. It's almost like like father, but you're gonna see it here. Baruch Ah Ba Ba. I'm literally translating right in front of y'all. Basham Yahuwah. All right. So I, I just translated right there in front of y'all. And you're going to see it on the screen in five, four, three. Where'd it go? There it is. Two, one. Got it? I just translated right there in front of y'all. I took the Hebrew words and I, I, I literally, y'all heard, y'all saw me typing. I was typing the English words next to the modern Hebrew words. Baruch Abba Basham Yahuwah. So, so Hebrew reads from right to left. So go all the way over to your right to your screen where those quotation marks are at the far right. Then you got to read the Hebrew coming from right over to left. Stop. There at the last quote at the left. All right. That's Yahuwah's name in modern Hebrew. Now back up, go over there to the far right. All right. So that first word is Baruch. Right? Not Barak is Baruch. Bam. You see that? You see the bum? Okay. The Rosh, the Ua. Okay, Baruch. And then you notice there is a hey right there. The next letter is hey, right? Bam, and an Allah. So watch that. That's Abba. It's almost like Abba the Father, but it's an A-H rather than just an A, rather than just an Aleph, because you see that last letter of those three? That's an Aleph. That would be just an A, Okay. So that is Ava, which makes that be in the name. I should say in, I'm sorry, I messed it up. Is the one, right? Who comes, right? The one who comes. Baruch, blessed is the one who comes. Now look at that next one. Basham, you got a bomb, you got a, a shin, you got a mom. That's the name, right? Bashem, the name. Yahuwah. So blessed are you if you are coming and promoting and building on the name of Yahuwah. There's no blessings for you unless you are coming in the name of Yahuwah. That's why you see in Hazun, Revelation 14.1, you see it there. What does it say in Revelation 14.1? It says the 144,000 sitting on Mount Zion, Zion, I should say, guess what? Guess what? Very important. What does it say? Anybody know? I'm sitting there waiting. All right, I help out. They're going to have the Father's name in their foreheads. Hazun 14.1. You got to have the Father's name in your forehead. So Baruch, Abba, not Haba. Because you're going to hear a lot of people say Haba. It's Abba. Baruch, Abba, Basham, not Bashim. Get them E's out of here. All E's got to leave the building. 
So if you're going to speak real Hebrew, every single E, the letter E has got an exit. Baruch, Abba, Abba, Basham, Yahuwah. That's the question for you tonight. Are you coming in the name of Yahuwah? Now, what would make Yahusha make this statement in Matit Yahu 2239? What would make him make this statement? Matthew said, I love how you're breaking down the translation. It's just simple. Well, if you look at when Yahusha speaking, Matt and family, all you got to do is go to Talim 118.26. Talim is Psalms 118.26. So when you go to Talim 118.26, another level. Because now you realize that Yahusha is quoting, guess who? He ain't just making that word up on his own right there. He's already planted that word eons ago in the one that he said was after his own heart. Who did Yahuwah said? Y'all put it in the chat. Who did Yahuwah said? This is a man after my own heart. Put it in the chat if you know who that is. I'm going to put it in the chat. And I'm going to put it in the chat. There you go. I just put it in there. The weed, David. And if you want to get the absolute correct English, uh, Bari, Hebrew to English, I just gave it to you. D-U-I-Y-D. Dweed. Ain't no W. Dweed. Get your E's out. Get your W's out of here. Get your V's out of here. Get your O's. I'm going to keep on pounding this for the next 30 days. To every one of you, you're going to stop. If you come on this channel, you're going to be like, I'm not going to say any O's in Hebrew names. Like, you got to type out the explanation in words. Go ahead. But in Hebrew names and places, you're never going to see an O. You're never going to see a V. You're never going to see a W. And you're never going to see an E. Ever. Do weed. So David said in Talim, Psalms 118.26. This is literal. Y'all ready? Blessed is he who is coming in the name of Yahuwah. We shall bless you from the house of Yahuwah. That's the we, a man after Yahuwah's own heart. So why did Yahusha at that time, winding down him being on earth, he says, y'all not going to see me anymore. You will not see me. Read it again. For I say to you from now on, you shall Never see me until you say, blessed is he or blessed is the one who is coming in the name of Yahuwah. So if you want the blessings, you better pay attention to Yahusha. You got to come in the name of Yahuwah. The son himself told you, don't be focused on my name. Why are so many people focused on the name of Yahusha? Why is that? Where'd that come from? I see so many people, they come out of Christianity, they come out of organized religion, and then they learn about Yahuwah, and they learn of the son that was walking on the earth, Yahusha. And all of a sudden, the most powerful thing to them in the world is the name Yahusha. And Yahusha says, you're not going to see me. Because he would have said, Barak, Abba, Basham, Yahusha. That's what he would have said. Yahusha would have told you that the greatest thing that you could ever say would be Yahusha. He would have said it right there. Why didn't he say it? Right? Lena, Lena's got it. Because what Constantine created with the Iesus, 
Sweet PP12. I'm telling y'all, most people, and that's why I'm here. Yahoo sent me to tear this one down. I know why I'm here. I got multiple assignments, and one of the core assignments is you better tell them they will never get to see me unless they call on the name of Yahuwah. You're not going to see him. If you believe you're going to get to see Yahuwah literally just through believing that Yahusha is the name above all names, you literally are going to be sitting there going, who fooled me? Because guess what you believed? The Greek translation. When we bring to you the real translation, as it was said from Aramaic into Hebrew, because that's the balance. Nobody's done that. I don't know anybody's done that. I know people that's translated straight from the Aramaic but they didn't understand the Aramaic all the way back to Danny Yael. So Daniel, when Nebuchadnezzar saw that writing on the wall, that fingerprint on the, na- on the wall, when Nebuchadnezzar said, oh my gosh, what is that writing? Because they were all speaking Aramaic. And all the children of Yisrael, all the quote Hebrews were speaking only Aramaic. So they brought Daniel in. Why'd they bring Daniel in? To read the writings on the wall because Daniel knew Abari. He knew Hebrew. Is it because he was taught in the way? Maybe. But is it more than likely because the spirit of Yahuwah was walking with him? So I'm telling you, you better... Learn to be immersed into the name of Yahuwah so that the spirit of Yahuwah, because no one can say Yahushi is Yahuwah except the Ruah ha Kadash be in them. Unless you got the set apart spirit in you, you're not going to be able to accept that. So Baruch, Abba, Bashem, Yahuwah. I'm just going to quote Yahusha. And almost every one of you are going, what in the world happened tonight? And those of y'all listen to the replay, y'all got to be like, what? Because y'all been hooked on somebody's not even here anymore. Doesn't even exist. Yahusha, I'm going to be very clear. And tell me, tell me if you can disagree with this. Is Yahusha walking on the earth anymore? Yes or no? No. Where is he? Where is Yahusha? He says, no one knows where I'm going. He literally said, nobody knows where I'm going. He says, but I'm going to tell you something. I go to prepare a place for you. So he's preparing a place for us. But he told you and me, And I'm telling you, and you never, you're never going to have another excuse, and I'm done. You're never going to have another excuse. Yahushua literally said, you're never, watch this, I say to you, from now on, you will never see me until you say, blessed is the one who comes in the name of Yahuwah. Unless you confess the name Yahuwah, you will never see him again, because he is Yahuwah. He told you, he opened up the whole secret right there. He goes, hello, everybody. I told the emissaries, the disciples, that I'm Yahuwah in the flesh. Hello, everybody. I'm telling you now, you're never going to see me again. Forget it. Unless you say that you're coming to me. What he's saying, I'm going to break this down in lamest terms, then we're out of here. Yahushua saying to, to you and to me, hey, if you're coming to me, I'm saying to you, you have to come to me professing the name Yahuwah. Otherwise, if you come to me and you say Yahusha, I'm not going to accept you. That's deep. And don't go in this, you know, my heart stuff like Christians do in organized religion. Don't go into that because it's in the word in front of your eyes. 
But you got the word. Guess what you got? You've been indoctrinated. Blessed is he who's coming in the name of the Lord. That's why it's fuzzy for most people. You've been Lord, Lord, Lordanized. Is that a new word? I just created a new word, Lordanized. You've been Lordanized. Well, I'm unlording you tonight. I got all kinds of new words tonight, right? I'm going to unlord you by saying, if your goal is to get to eternal life and to the most high, you can only do it through one name. I feel like Yahuwah the Immersive when he was out in the desert. I was translating it today. I was translating Matit Yahu chapter three today, which is when Yahuwah the Immersive, John the Baptist comes on the scene and the people were coming to him and he was immersing them. And then all of a sudden the Pharisees and the Sadducees showed up. And guess what he said to them? You brood of vipers, you children of snakes, who warned you to flee the wrath that's coming to you? The ax is already at your root and ready to chop it down and throw it in the fire. What are you doing coming out here to me with all your traditions? Are y'all not learning what Yahuwah the Immerser was saying to the Pharisees? And we got people coming into the word of Yahuwah with Pharisee behavior, traditions coming out of what? Christianity. Drop it. You ain't coming into Yahuwah's kingdom with Christianity traditions. It ain't going to happen. Tear it down. Papa told you, Peter said, all who call on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Shaul, who the Christians use to kill the commandments, in Ramaim, Romans 10, 13, he says, all who call on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. Hallelujah! They're only quoting you all, Joel 2, 32. You want to know why? Yahusha, and I'm out of here. You want to know why Yahusha himself is quoting Duweed, the prophet Duweed, David? Do you want to know why Kappa, Peter, is quoting you all, the prophet? You want to know why? Do you want to know why Shaul, Paul, is quoting you all, Joel, the prophet? Because they understand Mahashim, Acts 10.43. They understand it. To him, all the prophets witness that through his name, you receive the remission, the forgiveness of sins. To him, all the prophets. So every prophet, what name were they talking about? What name were they professing? What name was all the prophets witnessing in? What name? The only name above all names is Yahuwah. <laughs> That's the only name that the prophets and Yahusha himself came to earth as Yahuwah and said, you're not going to see me unless you accept that I am Yahuwah. Matit Yahu 20 through 39. You accept Yahuwah or you reject Yahuwah through Yahusha. So Yahusha is your cord. He's your, he literally is your vine. So if you're going to be a Nazarene, if you're going to be his branch, you got to accept that he said he's Yahuwah. There it is. I'm out. See y'all tomorrow. <laughs> I don't know what y'all gonna do with this one. That was hot. Bye-bye. Only promote the truth.